the new normal right in the light of the lockdown four that has been announced in the light of the lockdown that has been happening almost globally and the covid-19 situation and also the technological advancements that have been happening around the world i just would like to take you through a few features that are available to us a few tools that are available to us that can make our classrooms a little more involved enthusiastic interactive productive rewarding right that's exactly what i am planning to do today so this is the structure of my presentation and these are the components that i would like to uh cover one is very briefly maybe i'll spend a few minutes on the history of online learning educational technology etc and what is this new normal that we are talking about and then i'll go on to impress upon you the power of e learning educational technology online learning the tools that are available how vast the field is and how much we can achieve and then i'll very briefly maybe one slide i'll show to give you a few simple tips that will make your own presentations a little more productive and finally maybe one or two slides i'll show you to tell you what the future is ahead so what is in store for us so this is the structure of the presentation and let me move on okay there is a very simple thing that we need to do all of us together to begin this please write your name a short name it need not be the entire name a short name and the place where you are working if you are not working the place where you live in the chat box uh, this is two reasons one i would like to know you and two if possible i in case you do not know already i would like you to familiarize you with using the chat box so that you can post your questions later in case you have any questions so go to the chat box type your name and type the place where you are just take a look at this list of words that are there on the screen ask yourself this question how many of these words are known to me how many of these words ring a bell in my mind have i heard these names just count the number of words that you see on the screen and if you find some words that are known to you count them and just type the number the number of the words that you know already in the chat box if you for instance if you know five of those words if you are familiar with them just type five number five in the chat box good okay so in case you are already familiar with some of these words that means either directly or indirectly you have been using some form of technology already are you familiar with that and also it tells us that not you are so very young that you don't know these things at all perhaps all these things have been available to us for a decade some of them are already dead some of them have been forgotten some of them are no longer in use and new replacements have come and we are using a different set of technologies right today so this is just to familiarize you with things that have been there some of them have become obsolete but still some of them are in a different format are being used in the educational world today let me begin by telling you very briefly what is this online learning teaching or whatever so i will not directly give a definition so use in giving a definition but there is something called your digital footprints footprints today the world judges you by the digital footprints that you leave madhavi was talking to you about the future employment potential that's available to people who are familiar with technology and in case you apply for a job tomorrow even before you have reached the interview and i don't think anybody reads your resume in detail these days they will have watched you for the digital footprints that you have left what are those digital footprints what online learning have you taken from any source they will know even if you are not written it in your resume it's not very difficult to get that what courses have you uploaded 
have you ever created any digital resources and uploaded on any platform and are they available to people what is your productivity what is your contribution as a teacher what have you already done these are a few questions answers to which will be known to the employers to the interviewers much before you have gone there. so anything that you do in the classroom outside the classroom and make it useful to others and leave those digital footprints are going to be a factor to evaluate your contribution to the education world so i would like you to leave this question with you today maybe you can answer this question whenever you want and maybe you can go home and google yourself search it for yourself and find whether if you if i search your name you gave me your name right now that perhaps was a short name i can find out your full name in case i give you an opportunity and i ask you i search on google can i find anything that has been contributed by you to educational world so this question should make us aware to i mean open our eyes to the need of contributing whatever little might we can to the collective knowledge that's available online today okay this picture gives you an idea of the history of technology in education i am not going to discuss that with you i just would like to tell you that in the last 120 years a lot has happened and the pace at which things are progressing is much faster every day things are new things are happening and then new technologies are available to people and then we are making i mean big leaps and bounds in the process of delivery of education so what started a little before 1900 with the during the industrial age in the form of those huge massive early computers today we are in a different world a different um situation where technologies are unbelievably growing so very fast that we sometimes cannot even catch up with them so this is what it is and if you look at the bottom of this slide in 2020 the e learning market has surpassed 275 billion dollars i don't think it's easy for you to calculate how much that is in indian currency it's a huge un mind boggling figure so a lakhs of crores right so so much money is invested in the field of technology in education and the future is there and if you don't open your eyes now and if we don't become aware of the need of our perhaps will be thrown back and will become obsolete very soon let me just share this with you so when i share this video maybe you will just know not only the video but i'll perhaps if if you by chance cannot hear the audio don't get worried maybe you can watch it even without the audio also just see this
for its content, but for two other purposes. The content anyway, the previous slide also I told you, and maybe it's available to you. If you Google search the history of technology in education, you can anyway find that. But why I gave this to you, why I showed this to you, there are two reasons. One, so I found this short video online and I wanted to show it to you. So I could not bring that into the class as it is. I needed some trimming, some clipping, maybe some improvement, some changes to that or whatever. And on the screen, you see Bandicut. That's the name of software that I've used. This software allowed me to clip the video that I had to my choice and to suit my need and I have presented it to you. There are hundreds of such tools available to you online. And you can use any one of these lines when you want to edit a video clip that you want to show your students. That was one reason that I showed you this. The second reason is at the bottom, you see two web links. One of them is power tools, the other is animation. So whenever you want to create animations, your own, it need not be something taken from somewhere, but you can create They hardly need a one day practice. If you go to any of these sites and if you register and if you start using them within one day, two days, you can become absolutely conversant with them. So imagine creating your own video clips and then offering them to students when you present your lessons, how interesting they will become. So that's the purpose why I shared this video with you. Let me just share one more video with you. This is something very interesting, I think. Just see this, this is a one minute clip. Each student is using a teaching machine, a device which creates vastly improved conditions for effective study. What are teaching machines? How are they used? What can they teach? Who prepares the material they teach? And how does this material differ from textbooks, lectures, and educational television? What impact will machine teaching have on school organization? Some of these questions can be answered in at least a preliminary way. I am B.F. Skinner, professor of psychology at Harvard University. I should like to discuss some of the reasons why studying with the help of a teaching machine is often dramatically effective. With the okay, uh, that was not the full video that I played for you, but I just wanted to introduce you to things that are available to online. So if you want to bring B.F. Skinner into your class, perhaps it was not possible, but you can always have a clip of somebody whom you want to introduce to your students in your class and that material is readily available and this is what modern technology makes possible. So EdTech or online learning tools that are available to you make a lots of things possible to you to do in your class which perhaps were not possible when technology was not available to us. Let's move on from here. Okay, the second part of my presentation is the new normal. What is this new normal? The new normal, each generation is an evolved form of the previous generations. So every generation, right, since life began on earth, we know that man has been evolving, life has been evolving, otherwise we would not have been where we are today. And in case the modern generation is giving us these technological tools, this is a part of the evolution that has been happening. So we have to accept this. And if we don't accept this, what happens, perhaps let's see in the next slide. And education industry is no longer the educational industry, it's the ed tech industry now. So ed tech industry also has evolved into a different industry and that we call ed tech industry today. And every teacher must make it possible to infuse the technology that's available into the classroom. Otherwise, the classes are dull, drab, dry, and I don't think your students would be interested in sitting there physically in your classrooms. So those walled classrooms perhaps are going to go not there very long in future. They are going to be a completely different kind of classrooms that we are going to have. 
So what is that skill that we need to pick up today? The skill that every teacher needs to pick up is how to make the students understand what she is teaching in the class in the best, most effective possible manner. So a skillful teacher is one who makes learning possible, right? In case there are some objectives drawn by the curriculum designers, by the syllabus makers, by the lesson creators, by the material producers, or by yourself, and if you have drawn some objectives for delivering a lesson in the class, if those objectives are met, if they are realized, you are a skillful teacher. Otherwise, your skills are not relevant to the needs of the day. And unless you are skilled, you are not into the future, you are where you are. If you don't skill yourself, if you don't skill up, upgrade yourself, what happens? Let me show you in the next slide. This is a question that often ask, people ask me, sir, in case I don't learn these tools, what happens to me? Will there be a time when teachers are no longer needed? Because of so many technological tools that are available, robots, teaching and that kind of things happening in the future, all teachers will lose jobs. Sir, if I produce a certain material, English teaching material, and keep it on video, who will come to my class? These are the kind of questions that some teachers ask me. See, teachers will never be replaced by technology. No technology will ever be created in the world that will completely do away with teachers. Teachers will have a place. If students are not there in the class, perhaps teachers have to, if tomorrow, robots start teaching us. Students perhaps have to teach robots to teach what they have to teach. So teacher's place is assured. But the threat is not from the technology, but the threat is from somebody like me who knows technology better than I do. There is a younger, more competent and more updated teacher, resource person in my college or somewhere who is a threat to me because I have not updated myself. So the threat is not from the technology, but from other competent teachers. Unless I continuously evolve, I continuously update myself, upskill myself, my presence is almost irrelevant. If we teach students today the same way as we taught them yesterday, what happens? It's not a harm done to me alone. I may lose a job, that's a different thing. But the greater problem is I am robbing my students of my future. Just take a situation. Suppose I'm an English teacher and my English is bad. Or I don't know how to teach English. I teach the wrong way. I, my students are not involved in my class. No student ever gets an opportunity to open his mouth or say a few words or write a few words. No physical, practical, uh, hands-on experience for my teachers. What happens? I have 100 students in my class. And these 100 students at the end of the course go to for an interview and all of them come back. So what happens happened because of my incompetence, because I did not know how to teach or how to update myself, how to use the technology that's available, what is a more, uh, more effective methodology, what is that student-centered teaching, what is interactive teaching, what is group uh, work, what is pair work, if I did not know all these things, and if I taught the same way as others taught in the past, what is happening? The harm is not to me alone, but the harm is to every student who is sitting in my class. So that's a great danger. That's a great threat. So that's why let us continuously update ourselves. Let's realize the power of technology and let's begin using it for very highly productive purposes and for greater uh, re results and for realization of our objectives in future. So let's quickly move on to the tools available. This is the whole, the central part of my presentation. These are the tools that are available to you. And they have been available even before the lockdown began. And they were just knocking at our doors. In case the lockdown had not happened, in case COVID had not occurred, still these tools would have become easily available to us. And we had to use them. If not today, maybe six months later, one year later, two years later, perhaps. They were one or two years later, that's all. But the lockdown has been a blessing in disguise. And because of that, what happened? We have got them available with us. They are available on our hands much earlier. So instead of 
using them maybe six months later we are right now we need to use them and they're available to us the technology has been there so there are lots of different kinds of technologies that's already available one of the most important is virtual classroom like the one that we are involved in engaged in there is video conferencing technologies and so many other things each one of them i'm going to show you i'm going to take you through and i will give you more details about what i have in mind and what's available to the teachers the simplest the easiest but little known unfortunate suppose a student comes to me and then asks me for the meaning of the word what do typically teachers do so they give the meaning of the word to the student and tomorrow the student comes with one more word and again i give meaning or the meaning that i give to the student right the benefit that i give to the student ends with that student the other students because they did not ask me that question they did not get that but suppose i teach students the skill of locating meanings or whatever of words on their own if there were a tool which is very convenient for them to search meanings on their own how easier it would be how more enjoyable it would be just think of that right i think all of us are familiar with google and when i go to google on the address bar if i just type any word and say meaning right at the click of a button i can find the meaning of that word okay so it doesn't need a lot of technology actually anyone who has a smartphone anyone who has an internet connection can do that search on one's own if i teach my student this simple technique or if i begin using this simple technique myself i think it's very easy so every big company in the world has an online dictionary version today so starting from oxford to macmillan to collins to whoever has created a dictionary has put it online today all dictionaries are available but some of us may not know that there are some very interesting tools better than these i'll just show you one so this is onelook.com let's see what it does so if i go to this onelook.com there is a search bar here and suppose i write the word dictionary and search what happens so i am not just seeing one dictionary not macmillan not oxford not collins but the meaning from 43 dictionaries is searched so the word is searched in 43 different dictionaries and one dictionary that's most popular this noun meaning is already given here right and maybe some other links are available and i can choose whichever dictionary i want and i can go to that link and search for the meaning if i don't want to go to all those dictionaries perhaps the meaning is already available here clear so what a simple tool that was available to us so there is another interesting tool that's available to all of us visu words i'm sure if you introduce to your students they will love using it visu words visu words is another interesting tool where again i go to the same uh, word and i search for it within no time the web tool opens up a beautifully designed right spider web like right collection of words associated with that word and very beautifully packed because this green line means something there is a an index there at the left you can see that so the green line means something the blue lines mean something the dotted line means something and you can go to some of these words the moment i i take my cursor to this word i can also see the meaning of that word right wherever i go and if i click that perhaps there is another link there there is one more link that's available and i can get it connected to my word further so in this way there are lots of useful tools not known to our students and not known to ourselves and it is always a good idea to know them 
and use them constantly. So this is a simple tool that's available, onelook.com, vsuwords.com, please, right? Begin using them. I think they make learning fun. Okay, if there is anyone who has already used either of these dictionaries, these words are one look. Please go to the tool uh, chat box and say, yes, I, just I. Just type I. If you've used it already, type I. And this is such an easy tool. This is a free tool available to us. I request more and more and more teachers to use such tools. Maybe there are more interesting tools that I do not know, but I found these two really very interesting for English teachers. And they are useful for other teachers as well. Okay, let me move on. So let's look at the books that are available to English teachers and other teachers. There are a whole lot of websites that give us thousands, not thousands, millions of books. And almost all of them are available for free, for reading online, and for downloading. Some of them for doing lots of other things with that. You can create lessons out of the books that you can reach online. I'll just show you one, the best one perhaps, and maybe you can take a clue from there later. So Gutenberg, you know this, I think, right? This is one site that takes you to more than a million readily available free eBooks. This is project. All these are books, all these books are in PDF format, some of them in Word format, some of them in different format, JPG format. They are available to us ready and many of them you can download onto your own desktop and you can read them at your own pace or you can read right when you are on the site and you can bookmark them come back whenever you want all kinds of particularly for students of literature classics every classic that you want to access it's available to you there right some of the most modern works without spending a penny you can access them and you can read them online these days, many books are published directly digitally. There are no printed versions at all. Even films are going to come like that. Already, I think they have come. Right? There are no film. There is no paper printing. Right? So books are directly available. In fact, some teachers, some of you who are listening to me now, right now, you can start working on your own book and you can publish it directly digitally. And digital publishers are very popular already and you can take anyone service and do this. So please try this also. There are many other resources. Perhaps you can take screenshots while I'm speaking to you. You can make notes in case, in case you have a scribbling pad with you or maybe at the end you can ask for a recording. You can record the whole entire lesson on your own. So in your own laptop, perhaps you can press a button the and then you can, you can record this lesson. Right, so this is the project Gutenberg. I just showed it to you, and you can go to many, many PDF drive. Also, I think PDF drive also is a very rich resource of millions of books. Again, so many others, and most of them have links to books on literature, books on humanities, books on language, books on language teaching, books on technology, and I'm sure you will be quite highly enriched in case you use them. Okay, let's move on. Virtual classroom, right? I think you know what a virtual classroom is now. Even, I mean, a teacher who does not have any huge resources, for instance, we are doing this program on Zoom now. If you want to do this Zoom for 40 minutes and to about 100 students of yours, it comes absolutely free. But this, of course, because you are 500 Eluru College and Teresa College had to spend a little money. But if you want to do it for your own class, suppose you have 50 students in your class or 100 students in your class and you have classes of 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Zoom offers you a free class. Many other websites also offer lots of free courses, free courses, free, free uh, facilities. So now coming to something slightly different. So there are virtual classrooms, there are LMS facilities learning management systems, system. right? education management systems that are available to you online, which help you 
administer your class, document your class, assess your class, and do a lot more with your class. Almost everything you, as a physical teacher in your physical classroom, you can do online. And that too very easy. For instance, you want to build a record of all the performances of all students. What marks they scored, how many of them appeared for an examination, what is the average score of your class, how are they progressing, and a million other ways of analyzing the data that's available to you is possible on these platforms. So it's just like doing your job that you're doing physically now, but very highly conveniently and in a snap of the time that you usually spend for that. So Edmodo is one of the easiest and the best and the most uh, convenient to use. And there are free versions, there are advanced versions, which are payable, but at least you can begin using them and familiarize yourself with that. And any one of you can create multiple classrooms, for instance. Yeah. So if you take five classes, maybe in the first year or post graduation or maybe some intermediate college where you are teaching, whatever class, all of them you can manage, you can invite the students to join that, you can post your assignments and you can uh, assess them with their multiple choice. Sometimes they are automatically done and you, you can send a message to all your students together or you can maintain privacy if you don't want students to see each other's answers. Right? There's a provision for that and many, many other things can be done. So all the, the, the huge list that I've given you, I don't have time to go to each one of them, but I'd like to tell you that they are extremely useful tools that are available to teachers during these lockdown times. Some of them have been already available. Some more are every day evolving. Some more are coming into the market. Be on the watch out and please use the best that's available to you, the best that you like, and the best that's convenient to your situation. Okay. I don't know if you uh, still do not know what a podcast is. I don't have time to explain what podcasts are. Podcasts are extremely useful to your students and also to you. Imagine I have an audio clip. I can listen to that whenever I want. That's okay. I can also listen to that at my pace. I can listen to it slow, fast, whatever be the pace that I want. How many words do I want to listen to in a minute? I can set that in most podcasts. And the podcast is followed by lots of grammar exercises. Maybe, for instance, there is a vocabulary exercise. A vocabulary exercise based on something I've listened to, and I can immediately practice. I can give a test. I can quiz myself to know where I am, what I am, how many words have I listened today, learned today, etc., etc., etc. Suppose I want to learn writing. So there is a writing exercise based on that. I'll give you more examples of that a little later when I come to another tool. Okay, let me leave there. Online assessment, something really, really, really wonderful. Very interesting. Okay, all those who have logged in from a laptop, please go with me. And maybe if you have logged in from a mobile, you cannot do this exercise. But if you have two devices, suppose you have logged in both from a mobile and a laptop, it's still easier for you. So I'm going to, uh, please note down the number there at the bottom, 354-326. All of you first note down that number or remember that number 354-326. Okay, once you've noted down that number, please go to myquiz.org, this one, myquiz.org. Please open a new window. Even if you close the one, the window that you are seeing now, you still can hear me and you can follow my instructions. But as I told you already, if you have logged in from a mobile, perhaps you can still do that, but it will be very difficult for you using multiple windows. Your audio may cut off. But now, if, if you are working from a laptop, please do this. So, go there and then, if you have come to this window, this is the window that you see perhaps. So, there is a blank space here. So, the number that I gave you, please type there. Do you remember Three, the number? 354326. So this is the number, please Three. type it. Yes. And click join. But what I wanted to tell you is that there are such tools that are readily available to us on which you can post quizzes for your students. And the quizzes become extremely interesting. 
they become they build a lot of competitive spirit among the students and there are incentives that can be built into it there can be gamification that can be tried there and there are lots of other features that can be built into them and most of these softwares again come free to you kahoot.it is another i mean i mean that if you are younger children if you have intermediate and school children if you are working with them kahoot.it does an extraordinarily interesting exciting job for them with colors and say things and um, um, designs pictures immediate uh, stamps etc etc so students would certainly love using them and your quiz will become very successful and for you also you can have some ready made quizzes which you can download and use as it is or you can create your own depending on the lessons that you finished and a lot more can be done right using these tools that are available to you thanks to modern technology okay there are a whole suite a whole lot of apps right from google if you are i think there is nobody who is not a google user now and there are teacher center teacher related extremely helpful tools google classroom google classroom is one of the most wonderful places where you can conduct a class you can do that lms and all that that i talked about similarly there is a teacher hub right and the last one google drive i don't know how many of you are familiar you don't need to do anything extra in case you have a gmail account you automatically you readily have a google drive given to you with some 5 gb of data that you can store there you don't need to do anything extra because you have a google account it's given to you free 5 gb data a lot of videos photos lessons files you can store there and they come with you wherever you go right they are on the cloud and everything that you want to do with the files that you've accumulated there that you've stored there suppose you go to america tomorrow they are with you suppose you are in the classroom you can use them there from there for at home you can use them from there so the google drive always comes with you wherever you take it right okay let's quickly move on to the video resources that are available to teachers and students of course i found eng vid eng with one of the most useful in this area so they have again lacks of lessons each lesson is about 5 minutes 10 minutes 15 minutes not very long ones short video lessons which allow asynchronous learning i think there are two kinds of learning i think some of you are familiar with that asynchronous synchronous synchronous means all of us are sitting together and learning together what's happening now for instance right if you miss this you miss this so that is synchronous asynchronous is when everybody is learning at one's own pace at one's own time whenever it's convenient to you a recorded lesson for instance suppose you record this lesson and listen to it later it becomes asynchronous okay. now these video lessons that are available to you online for learning both for your students and for teachers if you use them i think again it's a wonderful great resource some of the best teachers in the world are chosen to present those lessons automatically you are getting the best instead of just managing with the resources that are available to you at your level you are getting the best from the best oxford has it cambridge has it bbc has it british council has it almost all big names in english learning world in the world of english language have offered you these courses these video tools and many many other learning resources all that a teacher needs to do do a little homework identify the one that suits her lesson and use it as it is or maybe learn from there and produce her own version of it you think the local is anything can be localized anything can be globalized so maybe the resources that you get which are perhaps meant to meet a larger audience from across the world perhaps you can use that material but you can produce you can represent it your own way maybe your tone your pronunciation maybe the need for a second language that you may have with your students anything else so any additional features that you need to build in additional examples you would like to do manipulate that the way you like it and then you create your own you just stand in front of 
a camera and then produce the same lesson using perhaps the same examples and then it becomes your lesson. Okay, so you away, that's localization, suiting the local needs. Every teacher must have the ability to take the resources that she finds and manage them the way that she wants. It need not always be used the same way it is formed. Okay, move on. Online learning. I think, especially for teachers, this is something extraordinarily useful. Some of the lessons that we need to learn, some of the things that we need to learn, I think a great job is done. Okay, how is it done? It's done by producing these lessons. This is a two minute video, not the whole lesson, but the first part of it, just watch. Two of Crash Course Literature, if you want to watch season one, you can do so over here. It's season four of Crash Course Humanities. It might even be like season seven or eight if you count all the science stuff. Whatever, let's just get started. We're going to start at the beginning of literature, or at least a beginning of literature. Sing in me, muse, and through me tell the story of a man who lets all his shipmates die, lies to everyone he meets, cheats on his wife with assorted nymphs, and takes ten years to complete a voyage that, according to Google Maps, should have taken two weeks. That man is, of course, one of the great heroes of the ancient world. Ladies and gentlemen, meet Odysseus, star of Homer's The Odyssey. Did I just say the odd at sea? It's a good pun. Not in the original Greek, though. Now everyone knows that you can't properly enjoy a book until you know a lot about its author. So before we discuss the Odyssey, we're going to begin with a biographical sketch of Homer, the legendary blind poet of ancient Greek. Okay, so that was a uh, maybe a one-minute extract from a long lesson on Odyssey. And see how beautifully these lessons are made. How audio-visually appealing they are. And how carefully they have been drafted, produced, presented. And such lessons are available almost on anything that you would like to teach in your class. Right? And these lessons have been produced with great care, great effort, with huge budgets. And all of them are available to you in the open domain. I think the one that I've just shown you is the 204th lesson in that series, it seems, in the classics. So you choose to teach something, you identify a resource like that, and then you cut it to suit your needs and you present it the way you want. And maybe you can stop that in the middle. You can continue your lesson. You can speak to your students. You can invite their comments. The lesson that's available, the video need not be in one go. So whenever you want, wherever you want, you can stop that and you can invite comments from students. You can have comprehension questions. What do you want to teach? Vocabulary, writing, speaking, and depending on the skill that you, uh, is your focus, and then you can use it for that. So this is another very interesting, useful tool available to teachers. Right. Okay. So that is, uh, there are lots of other resources like that. Skype is one. TED Ed again is one of my favorites. TED Ed is one on which you find thousands of best speeches in the world. The best speakers are invited on all subjects, whatever subject you choose to teach. It's not only for English teachers, but you can search for what you want and you can identify the thing that you need and you can present it the way you want. You can also convert that into your classroom presentations. So TED is different. TED Ed is different. Please note that. So TED is, the, of course, the best speeches from all over the world. The best of the best. Right? And if you convert them into your classroom experiences, they become TED Ed. So each lesson is designed in such a way that you can have your own comprehension question added to that. Or if somebody has already created a lesson on that, you can use that. Right? So lessons, speeches made by some great eminent people are brought to the classroom. You are giving good content and also at the same time you are teaching English. So all the listed ones, the other resources that teachers have. Then there are lots of discussion forums. I just would like to share one experience with you. WhatsApp. WhatsApp. I created a WhatsApp group of English lecturers some five years ago. And for five years, 
All these English lectures, we have about 250 of them. 256 is the maximum limit. So these 250 lectures, lecturers, what do we do? We often exchange our classroom experiences, resources that we can lay our hands on, something that we have liked. We follow some very strict guidelines, but at the same time, this is a collaborative, collective learning platform that we have created for ourselves. For five years, we've been, in, in fact, two days before this lockdown began, we started an evening discussion forum that has been going on for 55 days already. And every day, one of us, any one of us takes the lead and he introduces a topic, he or she introduces a topic, and then we have a discussion on that. And we have a time frame for that, six to seven, exactly one hour. And every day, that fixed time, all of us gather, and then we exchange ideas, and it's collecting the experience. It has been going really well. So what is our cost that we have invested in that? Zero, not a single rupee. Everybody has one's own smartphone, and everybody sits there, or maybe while doing whatever, their home chores, etc. And still, they can participate in that from your own, the comfort of your home. And we are mutually learning from each other. Now, and why I took two minutes to explain this to you is, this is such a simple technology that every one of you can do that. You need not go any serious technology for this. If you have a mobile phone, if you have an internet connection, and if you have friends, is there anyone who does not have any friends? 10 English teaching friends in your own college or outside, if you are an English lecturer, and if you have 10 other English lecturers who are known to you, who are willing to learn together with you, who are learning, willing to share their teaching, learning experiences with you, make a group of them, and then these 11, 10, 15, 40, 20, 500, whatever, you begin exchanging that, and then that's all that becomes a discussion forum. You learn one word a day, that's a big advantage. You learn a new concept one day, you learn to share one learning experience. I think that's a great advantage that you give yourself. I think after you go home today, every one of you, the 500 people that I see here online today, all 500 of you must begin your own forum. Zero cost. Right? I, you must proudly say, like I am telling you, five years I've been running this with so much of success. You also, right? Do that. You create your, you can create forums with students also. And of course, there are going to be some miscreants like this, somebody who is drawing these lines on the screen now. There is somebody who is, there is always a spoil sport in whatever you do. So, yeah. but be ready for that. Some things happen, some things go out of control. But of course, these things can be taken care of. Maybe if we act um, to preempt such possibilities, but maybe despite that, Technology also come, comes with some glitches here, some trouble. <laughs> <Evolved. laughs> to write on the screen. The same thing that happens in the classroom. If you are teaching in a classroom, there is a student who does this. Mm -hmm. and graffiti is a part of our, I mean, everyday life. Culture. Culture. <laughs> so people do <laughs> <laughs> gravity and Taj Mahal also. Right? Taj <laughs> so, so there are people like that. We must be prepared for that. And then yeah. this must be. This is India, that. sir. <laughs> I appreciate Madhavi's efforts to uh, <laughs> impress upon them the need to behave. Okay, anyway, so that's one, one kind. Then there are video conferencing tools. So first at the top, I've written Zoom, for instance. So Zoom is what we are using today. I already made a mention of that. There is a free version of Zoom. Mm -hmm. So if you have a small number of participants, like a class, for instance, and if you want to do it within 40 minutes, recently, just four or five days ago, Government Degree College in Hyderabad, Vidyanagar, they asked me to do a program for students. They invited me to be a speaker, and then I addressed them exactly for 40 minutes. But at the end of the 40 minute, the connection got cut. So the teachers were very clever there. What did they do? Because they wanted a longer session, they asked all the participants to re-log in, log in with the same link a second time. So 40 minutes became 40 plus 40, 80 minutes. So these are things that are available to us with a little manipulation. We can use them to meet our needs and WhatsApp, Zoom, go to webinar. I personally use go to webinar. I conduct lots of webinars and go to webinar for my friends and others. So again, that has a free version and a paid version. If you are an institute, you can buy the paid version and you can use it for a certain period with some conditions. 
Facebook offers you a discussion forum. I think most of your Facebook accounts, in the olden days, I used to use that reply to all emails. I used to post a question to 200 students or teachers, and I asked them to reply to all instead of replying. See, this is one, again, mail etiquette. Many of them do not know. So when they do not have to write to everybody, they use reply to all. When they want to write to everybody, they reply to only one person. So please don't do that. There is an there is a facility either to reply to the person who sent you the mail or to everybody in that mail group. So if there are 50 people in my mail group, for instance, and if I send a mail to them, which is a language learning opportunity, and if somebody answers that question and again replies to all, all 50 of us are shared that. Simple tools, inexpensive tools, very highly convenient tools, and very highly productive, rewarding tools. I request all of you, these have been available with us for quite some time, and it all the only difference is whether we are willing to use them. Mobile apps, I don't think I need to take time to explain them to you. The things that are available, there are millions of them. That's a jungle. If you go to Play Store and if you search for apps, I think you'll mind boggling numbers. But the one that I'd like to introduce you today is Hello English, one of the best that I've seen. Again, most of it is free, except the advanced version of it, which is expense, which is uh, paid. I mean, the initial thing is completely free. Of course, you have some advertisements and all that in between. But the courses on Hello English are built so well that, I mean, game, I, don't, I think some of you know what gamification is. Gamification is built at its perfection. So the moment I give an answer, I get some gold coins, right? Can you correct right. I get I collect some gold coins. So there are rewards, there are incentives, and there are stepping up. I go to the next level. So when I join this, there are two things that I can do. One, right, I can assess my own level, what level I am. Where should I begin? Everybody need not begin from lesson one. And if I assess my skills and if I think that I can directly go to 347 lessons, I'll directly go there. The previous lessons are not essential to me. I'm an English lecturer already, perhaps those are simpler. So the software takes you there. Software asks you a few questions. And based on your answers, it assesses you where you are. And it takes you direct to that lesson and you start from there and every day you get a lesson. If you don't do a lesson one day, maybe when you next log in, that lesson comes to you. The second advantage in this is, perhaps this is the only one that I have seen, this allows you to learn English through another language of your choice. So if you want to learn English through Telugu, through Malayalam, through Bengali, whatever, you can choose right on the first day when you log in, when you create an account. So I have chosen, for instance, English through Telugu. So I get whatever lessons I get using this bilingual teaching method. And hundreds and thousands of exercises are built into that. I can choose to do some of them, all of them. I can elevate myself to the next level and do lots of things. I request, this is a request. I request everyone who is here today to download that. I'm not any marketing agent for them. I'm <laughs> just telling you. So this Hello English is an extremely useful tool. Please do that. I've been using it for quite some time. I introduced this to my students. Many students told me that they liked it because most importantly, they get the lessons in their own mother tongue. Right. Okay, let's move on. Okay, let's move on to the last part of my, last but one part of my presentation. I have a few guidelines who would like to uh, make presentations online. Some of you, I think this presentation today, this webinar today should have motivated you to begin working online, at least from now, if you have not already done. Or at least some of the tools that you did not, did not know Perhaps you've been introduced to them. And the, the resources that I've introduced to you are not an exhaustive list. Is it? I mean, a small sample in each kind. But there is a rich a plethora of right, similar resources available. You have to do your own research. Just go to Google and search for what you want. You suppose you want some video lessons. Go and search for video lessons on the present continuous tense. Tomorrow I want to teach synonyms and I want some lessons that have already been done on synonyms. Search for that and then download or use those resources and build your own lessons. So do your own research. I just introduced some good ones to you and perhaps 
you can enlarge the scope of your research and identify the ones that best suit your requirement and do them. Now, in case you decide you decided today to do some online lessons, there are lots of instructions that can be given, but I'll just give you some four or five that are very useful to you. Basic, some very basic things. And all that you need is a camera, an ordinary camera. It need not be an expensive webcam, high resolution and all that. Like the one that I'm using now, I'm sitting in front of my laptop, I'm speaking to you, you can see me, you can hear me. I don't even, I'm not using even headphones today, right? I'm speaking directly to the laptop. So very little technology is needed. All that is, I'm maybe a taking a few um, care, a little care to see that this lesson goes well. Okay, so uh, again, let me tell you that these resources are only some kind of an introduction to the technology that's available to us, e-learning opportunities that are available to us, e-teaching resources that are available to us. How can we make our classes a little more rewarding, a little more productive for our students, a little more student-centered? Holding the attention of the students in such online classes is not easy. Right? Maybe you have to have a different technique. In, it is I mean, not like the physical. In the physical classroom, it's easy because I think you direct eye to eye contact with them and then you can control them, you can monitor them, you can do lots of other things as well. But here, perhaps, for, like for instance, maybe I asked you to uh, type, right? Type yes for one word, for instance, in that chat box. That is one way of holding your attention. Right? I asked you to visit a certain page. So that is one way of holding your attention. So these are some simple tricks that we can use to make our lessons a little more appealing. Okay, let's see what are these guidelines that I have here. So wherever you sit down to create your lessons, try to record your lessons, present them asynchronously or synchronously, please see that there are no distractions. Right? Maybe I know everybody has some limitations. Your house, you know, our houses are not very big ones. We have small houses and sometimes the house is located right next to the street and there are bound to be some restrictions, but we can, we can restrict them to the possible extent as much as possible. So everything, if, if everything cannot be avoided, okay, but what can be avoided can be avoided. So avoid your distractions and then uh, audio also see that it's a clear and then you are not, in case you are doing a lesson, if you suppose you want to record a lesson tomorrow morning, you can tell at least your family members not to distract you, disturb you during that time. So by taking that kind of little care, your lesson becomes more effective. So if suppose I'm talking to you and somebody comes from behind and somebody walks and somebody distracts my attention, so it will be a distraction to my students as well. So I need to take care to see that I am right in front. I am this is exactly like what I do in the classroom. Uh, do I allow distractions in the classroom? I don't. Neither to myself nor to my students. Right? And in case you can spruce up your room a little, if you can see that the background, and of course, this Zoom allows you a virtual background in case you want. So you can have a green background, you can have a picture behind you, you can have an animation behind you. All that you need to do is when you go to this webinar, you go to that when you screen share. So there are options for you when you start your video, there are options for you, you go to your virtual, you can create virtual backgrounds on a permanent basis or a temporary basis and you can use them. So if you think that your room does not allow that, if a room has, suppose your room is too very cluttered behind and you don't want to show it to your students. So it's possible. Technology allows that. Right? And you take a few other, I mean, precautions to ensure that your lessons are, uh, lessons are focused and um, I think attention grabbing is easy and etc, uh, etc. Et so when you sit in front of a camera, perhaps you need to have a little space. Suppose I'm using my hands like this. So there must be enough space. Suppose if I sit too very close to the camera, it, it becomes difficult for me, right? And typically, uh, I think I've seen some presentations which have gone wrong for some very simple reasons. They don't know where the light should be in their house. For instance, if I'm making a presentation, if the light is in front of me, the light directly falls on my head, I can be seen easier. 
suppose is, if I sit in any other direction, the light is not there or if the light is falling on me from behind. So there'll be a glare, uh, there'll be a glare behind and then people cannot see my face. So always take these kinds of precautions in case you want to create lessons. I think every one of you must try a Zoom lesson within the next one week. Will you all do that? Just say yes in your chat box. Yes, I will. Yes, yes is enough. Everyone who has not tried any such technology must create the first Zoom lesson within the next one week. Even if there are four or five audience, your own family members, it's fine, but do it. It's a free version. We've got a large number of yeses, sir. Wonderful. I'm so happy. I'm really very happy that it has motivated some of you to come forward, volunteer, to do such things. It's not easy at all. All that you need to do is go to Zoom or go to webinar or any such platform and then create an account for yourself. And once you create, you log in, you can schedule a meeting. When you schedule a meeting, you give the date, the time, the theme, the title, the description, and also whether you want to restrict admission to some people or whether you want to open it to everybody, whether you want to create a password for entry and whether you want to throw it open. If you throw it open, sometimes this kind of problem sometimes happen, right? Okay, so you can restrict entry in case you don't want this. Maybe for instance, you have only your students and nobody else, others cannot join. Right, so that uh, uh, you can begin with your family. If there are four members in your family, that's enough. That's a big number. So four people are sitting together, or sitting separately, or they are wherever they are, and then you begin and you practice. Right, so that's one thing that you can do immediately. And when you are doing that, keep these things in mind. And of course, practice, 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 practice. There is no substitute to that. There is no replacement to that. There is no other way you can become perfect. So when I did the first lesson, I also had all these issues and gradually because I've done a few lessons already, I know what it is, right? Do you know when Madhavi wanted to do this program, she took so much care. She trained everybody in her own college and everybody who had to stand there, everybody who had to make, control these things. So she had created a team in her college. They are using this Zoom for the first time in the history of their college. They have bought this license only one or two days ago. So this has become possible because she has taken this care. Similarly, when you are going to go before the camera for the first time, you take whatever care is needed and then see that your lessons are productive, right? Finally, the future, the future. Of course, don't think, oh, the future is far away. Why should I bother about that? That's not for me. That's for my child. The future is now. Today is the future. This next moment is the future. So if I'm speaking to you at this hour, the next minute is my future. No? So I'm already in the future. And if I don't skill up myself, if I don't, I mean, make myself uh, responsive to what's happening around the world, I think I'm lost. I've become obsolete. Things become obsolete, okay, but people should not become obsolete. No, teachers should not become obsolete. No, What happens to a teacher who does not update, upgrade? Imagine. The world will push you back, throw you out, and then will treat you as rot. A teacher can never afford to be obsolete. You must be constantly updated on your subject, on your methodology, on the resources that you have, on the technologies that are available, and a hundred other things. If you don't do that, you are a bad teacher. So please update yourself and be ready for the future. What is being ready for the future? All the title, the description, and also whether you want to restrict admission to some people or whether you want to open it to everybody, whether you want to create a password for entry and whether you want to throw it open. If you throw it open, sometimes this kind of problem sometimes happen, right? Okay, so you can restrict entry in case you don't want this. Maybe for instance, you have only your students and nobody else, others cannot join. Right, so that uh, uh, you can begin with your family. If there are four members in your family, that's enough. That's a big number. So four people are sitting together, or sitting separately, or they are wherever they are, and then you begin and you practice or get attendance or that kind of things. Right, but but something else. Tomorrow, biometrics can be used to evaluate to assess the tone, the temperature the heartbeat, 
right? And the pulse rate, the sweat, whether you are sweating or not. Why are you sweating? What kind of stress you're feeling, right? Your gait, your speed, the way you are typing, using your fingers or your key, all these things can be studied on the spot at that moment while you are sitting in the class, while a student is inside the class, all these things can be collectively read, analyzed very quickly, and the teacher gets feedback what kind of changes she has to make to her methodology to teach that student specifically. It's not very far. That kind of technology is not very far. Maybe in the next few years it's available. Already people are working on that. Imagine what kind of a future situation teachers. This is a very handy, very useful tool that's going to be. So I can individualize the learning process for my students. I can meet the specific needs of individual students by doing this. Right? Today, I'm teaching everyone at the same pace. I hold the examination at the same time for everybody, right? I give the same question paper to everyone. I expect everyone to write that examination on that specific day, whether you are feeling healthy or ill or whatever. But tomorrow it's not going to be like that. Today it's already not like that. So the student has been, so if you join a course at a Udemy, and there are so many other things, no? So there are online courses. I think this is one more thing I wanted to tell you. Every teacher must constantly update herself by joining some course available, either free or paid or whatever. Most courses are available for throwaway price. Some of them on festive days, Sundays, holidays, they are available for 300 rupees, 400 rupees. Very good courses. To some of the best, register and do them at your pace. You need not go with the rest of the class. You can do them at the government of India has introduced a Swayam, I think all of you know. Several thousands of courses are completely free. I've seen some courses, I think they have one lakh registrations, some courses. So register yourself for some of these courses. I. I mean, it may not be inappropriate if I share with you that I've done at least 15 to 20 such courses online so far. In the last eight years, I retired from government service eight years ago. And during these eight years, I've done at least 15 to 20 of these courses. Recently, just some 25 days ago, I joined an advanced Excel course and I'm doing it now. I'm learning Excel. I don't need it, but maybe I think maybe some future demand might be there. So like that, all of us will register for some courses, learn them and update ourselves. There are very soon, there is going to be 3D technology available to us in the classroom. 3D printing, I think some of you know already. So when I taught English in a certain uh, college some time ago, uh, I was talking about Realia, for instance. So how can I use Realia to teach vocabulary to my students? So some people, some teachers said, sir, there are so many things which cannot be uh, presented in the classroom. If I am talking about an elephant, can I bring an elephant into the class? A real elephant, it's not possible. But today it's possible. How is it possible? It's possible either with the 3D printing technology or you might have heard of that holograph. Recently you might have seen that Microsoft launching that holograph. I don't know how many of you have seen that, but that's possible. You can actually create whatever. You can physically be present in multiple places at the same time. You can create a holograph of yourself. And for instance, just imagine, suppose you have 50 students in your class and you can go to all those 50 places where they are. So you visit 50 homes at the same time. You create 50 holographs of yourself and your hologram goes there and physically sits right in front of the student and teach what he needs. Imagine that. That's possible. That's going to be possible tomorrow. So be ready for this kind of situations and the future is not for our future has already begun. So I'll show you one video and stop there. This is the last slide that I have. So this video is about the future of aid technology. Please watch this. Let's face it, schools, not what it used to be. Today's high schoolers are learning how to fly drones and 3D printing their artwork. It's really cool, but also kind of scary. So what crazy new technologies will replace number two pencils and good old graph paper in the classrooms of the future? Virtual reality has been around since the 90s, but now Facebook and Google are no longer in your face, but on your face. 
Google's Expeditions program turns smartphones into virtual reality viewers using simple, inexpensive cardboard. And now that Facebook's bought Oculus Rift, they're planning on getting into classroom gaming as early as next year. This is the first kind of headgear that might get you into the popular crowd. 3D printing in schools is revolutionizing the art of show and tell. These printers can make machine parts, jewelry, even guns. Yesterday's arts and crafts is now modern day engineering. Elementary age children are already using 3D printing to design prosthetic hands. Remember how you had to lug around heavy books and then swap them out for other heavy books from your locker? Well now there's the cloud, saving students from back problems everywhere. But the cloud could also give teachers direct access to data on students' study habits. By doing all their homework online, students provide engagement data on how long they've spent on their assignments and whether or not they're taking notes. There's a bonus though. Major publishers could use that data to judge how effective and engaging certain textbooks are, so you could be recycling that boring algebra book. With biometrics technology, you've got fingerprint scanning to borrow library books and iris scanning instead of ID cards. Teachers will even be able to tell if you're concentrating or not during online courses using eye tracking technologies. Yikes. It's like old school projectors, but in 3D. Remember Michael Jackson's Back from the Dead moonwalk performance? Well, hologram technology in classrooms is still just a dream for now because it's too expensive. But in the future, it would allow teachers to give lessons to students across the world. Imagine taking a tour of a historic 3D model of the Colosseum right from your desk. The potential for new technology in the classroom is pretty amazing. But will it cause students who are plugged in all the time to forget what it's like to live in the real world? Okay, uh, that's where I stop. But before I close, one or two things to tell you. So the future is going to be very attractive and then lots of uh, new technologies are going to happen and then they will be available to us soon. We must be ready for them and we must be willing to accept them. Uh, before I close, uh, I would like to tell you that there will be a question answer session for the next 10 to 15 minutes. And then uh, you can type your questions in the chat box. Madhavi will read them out if I can answer them. I will certainly give you an answer, but otherwise you can write to me at my email address given there on the slide, dianagaraju at gmail.com. I will certainly respond back to you in case uh, your mail uh, needs uh, any further interaction between us. And one more thing that I wanted to share with you, uh, I am a 66 year old person. I retired from government eight years ago. I taught in colleges, in rural colleges. Uh, all my entire 36 year career was in interior, very small places. And uh, maybe sometime before I retired, uh, something very miraculous happened in my career. What was that? I have always been just a teacher, just like any teacher, right? Any one of you or any one of them. It was like me, right? So my teacher, perhaps, I mean, my life, what was my life like? So he began as a teacher at this point of time in 1976, and he retired as a teacher at this point. Maybe he died as a teacher. That would have been my career if something that miraculous had not, that dramatic had not happened. That dramatic happening was when I happened to meet a certain great visionary, a wonderful gentleman, one of our past commissioners, Dr. Lakshmi Narayana. What did he do? I don't know what he found in me, but he discovered me rather. He chiseled me. And he told me, Nadaraju, you are not just, you should not rot there in that rural college there. And I want to give you some big responsibility, accept that and change that. Like the responsibility has, the opportunity has come to you now about this technology. That opportunity came to me that day. And when he told me that he would give me a big assignment and asked me to take care of that, I did that. Right? He will speak to you about that, I think. So he is with us today, and I'm very happy that he brought about that transformation in me. He has that golden touch. So you know that golden touch? Whatever he touches becomes gold. Right? He's that king with us like. So he touched me, I turned gold. 
and I am whatever I am today. It's because of him. I, I think Madhavi has taken the trouble of inviting him to this uh, presentation today. I'm very happy that I got an opportunity to make a presentation in his presence. That itself is a great pride to me. I'm so happy that I've got this opportunity that he has listened to my presentation.